Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Bennett Tchaikovsky, and luck, welcome to our CPA Review Courses Overview. And today we're going to be looking at the Becker CPA Review. So um, our disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions of this presentation are those of the author and audience participants only, and not the author's employers or affiliated organizations, including but not limited to Irvine Valley College and the South Orange County Community College District. The presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute any legal or accounting advice whatsoever. This presentation is copyright 2020 by Bennett Tchaikovsky and Sophie Montano. We encourage you to share this presentation and share links to this presentation on an unmodified basis. If you modify the presentation in any way, please email me prior to doing so at bennett1812 at gmail.com to discuss. And note the author does not claim any copyright whatsoever in any companies or organizations mentioned in this presentation or the other parties. Rather, the other parties are the owners of their respective copyrights. So um, the purpose of this video series is recently I went through it. I posted my own uh, CPA exam journey, uh, but that was uh, back in 1991. Uh, now we're in 2020. And so the purpose of this is to really provide you, um, to provide students who want to become CPAs with a preview of the various different CPA courses that are available. Um, the CPA review courses that are being reviewed as part of the series are providing us evaluation copies of their online software and textbooks. And so the author of this presentation as well as the participants have not been paid or are not be co being compensated by the CPA review courses in any way whatsoever. And I think that is really important just because we don't want this to become a, uh, an infomercial. So here we've got presenters, um, Sophie Montano, who I'm gonna be turning this over to in just a moment. She graduated, well, first off, most importantly, she took me for accounting 1A and 1B, which must mean she's awesome which she is. So she is a Cal State Fullerton graduate. She interned at Ernst & Young. She'll soon be a full-time employee there. And she is presently studying for the CPA exam using the Becker CPA Review. Um, and I am a full-time instructor at Irvine Valley College. So with that being said, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna turn this over to Sophie. And I'm gonna make Sophie, you are now gonna become the host. Okay. And so Hi, now it's, burdens okay. on you. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, you're stressing me out. Okay. <laughs> hey, come on. Give me a break. Um, right. <laughs> okay. So um, just a little bit about myself before we start. Um, like Bennett said, um, I recently graduated this spring semester from Cal State Fullerton. I actually also went, um, attended IVC uh, for the beginning part of my education. Um, I also took his 1A financial class and then I took his 1B honors and it was an experience to say the least. Um, so let's get right into it. I think, um, am I, is my screen on? Um, I don't see your screen yet. So you probably okay. just need to hit like the share screen and okay. then okay. there we okay. go. Oh, awesome. Good? Yeah. Okay. So um, this is the Becker uh, kind of sign-in little module. So every single time you have to go in, you can just um, sign in. So I'm gonna sign in really quick. Um, and so Sophie, the way you got access yeah. to Becker was that as soon as you had your offer letter from Ernst & Young, they essentially provided you with this, right? Yeah, so um, prior to that, or yeah, so technically whenever you do get an offer, um, a full-time offer with um, any big four firm that I know. Um, they give you direct access to this. So whenever you do sign your letter um, of confirmation that you're gonna be with the firm, at the end, they'll tell you, um, you have a special form with Becker, so you just have to mail that in. So technically, you don't get directly charged for that, the firm does. So okay. once you turn in that paperwork um, and Becker approves that, which takes like a couple days, um, no more than a week, I would say, you're able to have um, immediate um, kind of, like you can go on the course immediately. And then after that, you kind of, um, you're able to order your books and then that way you can um, just keep ordering them until you finish up the, 
the whole and the book and the books are the books are all free correct oh yeah it's okay. all a part of the course um okay. with the thing the cool thing about um kind of getting the that offer from the big four is that you're able to get the full-on course so they give you the full materials plus the textbook um and kind of give you like basically the most the most access like potentially so that's the cool part of everything cool so we're going to sign in here so you're going to have the opening window this is going to be kind of like your home um screen type of thing so it kind of just gives you study plan um getting started video uh it tells you kind of like where you're at depending on the module or anything like that and up top we have like the start so i'm starting with far specifically um just because it does have the most sections which you'll see in a minute uh, but this is where this is kind of like the home monitor screen so to access the modules you're going to go into your sections, and then here again you have your financial auditing regulation business and then on top of that it says how many mod modules uh, you have per exam so like i said far definitely has the most out of all of them and it's kind of like the most um course, course intensive so you're going to hit continue to course and then here, you're basically, basically going to be where you're going to be going through and working through all the modules. So you have a quick overview. You have um, kind of the name of the module that you're going to be working on. You click on this module, and it's going to show you all the small kind of little subcategories within that one module. Okay, so just um, just taking yeah. a as, sorry, sorry, just taking a step back really quickly. Yeah. If you can go back to the to the sections, okay, so. Okay, okay so for here. okay so everything so like within financial there's like 10 different subsections yeah right and then with each mm -hmm. within each one of those sections there's more obviously there's a lot more detail within each one of those yeah okay correct okay so and then um basically whenever a section is kind of like darkened in that little area that means i finished it um so i'm currently on section three i'm in progress um, also, something to keep in mind is for section one, I had already completed that, but the thing is, because this course updates so constantly, so sometimes you're going to have to get an update and it'll say in progress, even though you already have completed it, but it'll basically show you right here if they've added something new, so they added a new simulation, or I think up here they added multiple questions and a simulation, so that's definitely wow. something to keep in mind. Okay. And how so, often are how often are they updating it? Is it just continuous or is it? Um, I would say since I started, which is about a couple of weeks ago, they only did it once. So that was okay. the only time. But um, I haven't, I don't think it happens too, too often. I was actually surprised that it did happen. Right. But that's just something that I want everyone to like keep in mind when you're doing this. But the cool thing is, again, Becker does the update for you. You don't have to like go out and look for the latest version. And and when Becker and do they explain this to you? Because I remember that when I was taking the when I was reviewing for the CPA exam, the instructors actually were, were sharing with us. They said, "Okay, well, we think that this is going to be on the test," and so I guess mm -hmm. Becker is kind of getting that type of feedback and trying to figure out how they can make their course even better and help you successfully pass as more information gets out there. Is that really what it is? Oh, yeah, I would say okay. absolutely. Um, in terms of like, okay, so for example, you know, we have, um, we're here in financial three, so we'll go to cash and cash equivalents. Um, so see, in, in this section, there's like simulations. So okay. it's uh, pre-assessment lecture skills, multiple choice simulations. So in um, the lecture, I would, I would say in the lecture, in the skills practice and in the simulations, there's kind of videos that go along all that, all throughout um, kind of like taking you through along. And the cool thing about it is that they really do focus on um, kind of the most important things you need to know. They'll throw in little tips and tricks of like um, how to answer questions on the exam, like what to look for, what is typically tested more often than not. So okay. a big part of it is definitely them guiding you through what you need to know, what you don't, what isn't necessarily maybe tested um, as much as you think it would be. So that's okay. the really cool thing. So they really help you narrow down what it is you're looking at. Okay. And then the the approach that Becker typically would have you do is that you do the pre-assessment questions and then based on your score in that and how long it takes you to complete, then they're going to say, well, we recommend that you start on lecture or they say we will recommend that you start on 
skills practice or MCQs or something along those lines, right? Yeah, definitely. So what you're going to do is the, with any single kind of module here, you're going to go through your pre-assessment um, and then if here, I can open up a new one. So if I go to pre-assessment here, so this is something that I haven't done, I'm okay. going to go launch and then it's going to give me kind of questions here. And then depending on whether um, I get the pre-assessment, the question right or not, or I don't know, um, at the end, it's going to tell me if I did, I think if I passed more than within 80%, then I can skip the lecture and go um, see, yeah, straight to um, skills practice. But again, this depends on what you, um, like what questions you did incorrect or correctly. Sure. So it really does a good way of guiding you on what to do. And something to also keep in mind if I close here, um, this is kind of the recommended um, kind of way of doing things. So you go pre-assessment, lecture, skills, practice, multiple choice simulations. Right. But something that I have found really helpful is actually after my lecture is going into simulation straight on just because that is going to be around half of the exam. So to me, I found that kind of more helpful, more important to do and tackle first, as opposed to doing the skills practice, multiple choice and simulations. Um, just because you're going through so much material. And if I'm being honest, it does take a while. So you definitely do want to find um, a way of studying whatever way works best for you. But for me, that works the best. Right, and just let me kind of expand this a little bit more quickly. So mm -hmm. I was, so Sophie and I were talking um, a few weeks ago and uh, we all get stressed out about taking this test, which is a very natural reaction. And you know, I think what's what's really kind of cool about this is after talking with you today is that for you, I think, and this actually sounds like a really good way to approach the material for you, is that it sounds like you were reading the actual textbooks that Becker sent to you first, and then you were jumping into the simulations, right? Yeah, absolutely. So okay. um, to kind of make a long story short, um, while I was beginning to study for the exam, it was honestly very difficult for me because it just, it was something that I had never really done with so much material at a time because it is really, um, the course in general, like heavy. So um, it was just kind of like stressful and just uh, kind of difficult to go through all that. Um, but I feel like as time goes on, now that I've been in it a couple weeks, um, you really kind of have to learn for you in terms of being able to study in rotation. So before, like I mentioned before, I did the pre-assessment pre lecture, skills practice, multiple choice, and then simulation. But now um, kind of what I found more helpful for me was to go with the textbook provided, the actual physical copy, and like do some highlighted notes, kind of what I thought was meant. And then I jump into the video lecture and they kind of supply me with even more notes. So I kind of hit that like twice. And then after that, I go straight into the simulation just because for me, um, it shows me kind of what the exam is going to be like and what exactly I need to know for the exam. And after doing that, as opposed to just going through all of it kind of the way that Becca wanted me to do it, I felt like it was a lot easier for me to go back and do the multiple choice um, and have like more correct answers because the simulations really give you that extra push because they emphasize kind of the the harder tickets and what the um the testers can kind of test you on um, right. in terms of like the difficulty level okay. so for me i found out the most helpful okay does anybody have any questions so far like lydia joanna or brent do any of you have any questions or you can just go ahead and unmute yourself no, it seems pretty straightforward. It yeah. seems pretty cool. No, it's it's a really, I mean, and, and I think, Sophie, I think you'd admit, I mean, this is a pretty powerful tool to assist you with pass with with a basically for preparing for the CPA exam. But this is really it it when you were doing this at first, it was extremely overwhelming. Oh, definitely. Um Speaking honestly and truthfully, it was definitely a lot to take in at first, especially because I had just recently graduated and I took like a week or two off just to kind of take a break and whatnot. Um, and then jumping back into this, although yes, it is kind of one subject, the subject of accounting, 
it was definitely stressful and the fact that there's just so much information like you don't realize how much information it is until you actually receive the book and you actually get started and yeah. there's so many kind of little rules and um specific ways you have to do everything that it just quickly it can become really really overwhelming and it can kind of lead to like high stress especially I would say um, if you don't have a plan so after I kind of got over those days of being kind of stressed out I really sat down and started to plan exactly what I needed to do every day and what I needed to accomplish because when you kind of take everything in bits and pieces it helps out so much more and also what I would recommend um, talking to uh, Mr. Schleifoff, he also really helped me and also talking to a friend who had recently passed the bar exam. So him giving me his tips and kind of just even talking about it really alleviated that stress because it really can get overwhelming and stressful um, in the beginning. But once you kind of get in the groove of it and you get kind of used to it and it really um, kind of becomes easier just because you kind of get used to the, the system to be going through on one day. And Sophie, you were mentioning earlier that when they're providing the video solution walkthroughs, that it's different instructors who are going through and doing the walkthroughs, right? Yeah. So can, for can you give example, us like, can you like pull up an example? I just wanted to yeah. see what one of them looks like and see how they go totally. through and do it. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to go to Nomon Exchange and then I'm going to hit simulations. It's going to go launch. Um, here you're basically going to have the simulation um, and they're going to ask you like questions what you want to do sometimes you kind of have little exhibits that go along with it sometimes you don't depending so here you have a show, show solution um, but this just kind of gives you just the kind of wordy explanation of it but personally I learn better through like a video like someone explained to me so you can click up here skill master video it'll take you to a new okay. window and then here it's basically going to give you um, the notes of some of the outline person um, talking through the video and here it just kind of provides more detail on um, why an answer was correct or not depending on what it is and each different each different relation has a different teacher so you kind of see um, perspectives on the subject and something that's really cool is that sometimes they'll give you tips within um, the simulation so they'll tell you oh um, what we recommend is looking for the call of the question and then reading um, the facts so you know right. exactly what it is you uh, they want you to answer or right to, uh, yeah they want to. and then so like when it, when you go to the 555 or like that second screen below so like yeah. the little red ink that's there okay so now you're seeing the person and then you're yeah. seeing their annotations on the screen okay so they'll definitely go through and just kind of like detail by detail kind of outline what's important, what's not important. Sometimes they'll do the actual journal entries with you, which is really cool. Oh, it's so exciting. It's like a non-cash exchange. <laughs> yeah. So um, sometimes they'll do that um, depending on, again, the call of the question. Um, so it just kind of goes through the video longer than like 10 to 15 minutes at a time. And they're extremely helpful. So uh, me going through these videos has been a lot because it's almost like a, another teacher because you have someone else um, guiding you lecture, but now you have someone guiding you specifically on the simulation. Okay. Um, and they give you again, like tips and tricks on like um, certain questions you can use the Excel button. So the, the course um, offers that. It's not the actual Excel, but they tell you like once you actually get into the CPA um, exam, they provide provide Excel for you. So if you want to use that, they'll give you the calculator um, to do relations on. So it's like you're actually sitting down and potentially like doing the the simulation part. Doing the exam. The exam. Okay. Yeah, which is super, super helpful because it kind of like calms down your nerves and the fact that you have seen it this way or you have practiced it this way. So this is extremely helpful to actually put yourself in in um, the mindset or the shoes that you would be when you're taking the exam. Okay, and then as far as like the way that this looks, is this really close to what the actual exam looks like as well? Or is that, have you seen a preview of that at all? Um, I personally haven't, um, okay. but I will say that I, again, like I mentioned before, I had a friend who already took bar, right. and she said that 
very similar to this kind of um, layout and, and setting. Okay. So, um, but it just kind of has like more going on, of course, um, right. because they're going to, the, the reviewers are just going to kind of throw on a lot of information, but you have to decipher um, what's needed and what's not needed. Sure. But it's very, I've heard it's very, very similar um, in terms of like what the exam will look like. Right. And so the, the Microsoft Excel, so have you been, as you've been studying, have you been using Excel to like write out all of your work? just so you're kind of getting used to that on the test or is it, have you been doing more pencil and paper? Um, I would say a little bit of both or sorry, um, definitely a little bit of Excel, but definitely for me, I just learned best with paper and pencil. Okay. Um, so some of the instructors um, said that during the exam, of course, we're going to have a calculator and we're going to have Excel, but we're also going to have a laminated card. So just kind of, it's kind of like a whiteboard type of thing. Right. So you're able to write down um, kind of notes there. Okay. Um, and for me, again, it's just easier for me to write down things because I feel like it kind of sticks more. Um, right. But for calculations, Excel, I would say is the way to go just because it's a lot quicker. Um, and that's another thing, the, the reviewers really emphasize time because time is really important for the exam. Like yes. you really have to, I would say almost master how to take on the questions because you will run out of time if you, if, um, you don't really have like a strategy or, or way of going about it. But right. Becker specifically does a really good job on kind of preparing you um, to get in there and just kind of tackle the questions that you that um like tackle it the way that you should be handling it okay can i ask real quick time yeah. wise on that test do most people always run out of time and don't answer all the questions or is there like a half majority that typically answer everything you just have to keep going at a good pace um honestly i would say i think it just kind of depends person to person um like for example going back to my friend who just um took the exam he said that he was like basically trying to do everything or trying to put in answers until the last minute. So I would say that time is definitely a valuable thing. Um, but I think it just also depends, like the strategy is very, very big, like they emphasize that. So whenever you see like simulation questions, um, they say to do the questions that you know right away. So then you spend as least time as possible on that. So when you get to simulations that are a little more difficult for you, you have more time to spend on those. Um, but something that Becker also really emphasizes is if you don't know the answer, I would, they say like, try to make the best guess that you potentially can. So for example, if they're telling you to, um, complete a journal entry, maybe you don't, you don't necessarily know the numbers, but if you put in the journal entries, like maybe, you know, the name of the account, sometimes they give partial credit on that. So that can help out a lot. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Brent, the other, oh, I hope the, I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, Brent, the other thing I was going to suggest to you is, and just as kind of, uh, kind of further commenting on what Sophie just said, is that when you get to any exam, it's a, it's, it's a lot about psychology. And what I would do, and this is what I always recommend, recommend to my students who have taken me for 1A and 1B, is that when you get to the exam, you uh, start with the questions that are easiest for you first jump around. If you start with question one and it takes you 15 minutes to get it through, it's not going to work out. You've got to jump around. You've got to try to basically skip around. And, you know, the key thing is, is that the more you practice, the better off you'll be because the CPA exam, they will repeat questions. Mm -hmm. So if you've gone through and if you've done it enough times, and then just to kind of elaborate a little bit further, if you see a question you don't know and you've studied, the chances are is that everybody else is going to be in the same boat. And a lot of times they will throw things on the CPA exam intentionally that you've never seen before. So I would recommend going and doing everything else first and then coming back to those later. And Sophie, is there a way you could, so if you've gone through each one of the modules and then say if I want more multiple choice questions or more simulations beyond what's in those modules, are those available to me on Becker or how does that work? Uh, I don't, I'm not 100% sure. Um, what okay. I do know is 
towards the end, um, they also give you like some flashcards if you want to, like you, okay. you learn better that way. But I know for every single um, kind of uh, section here, so for financial, offer you these unlimited practice tests. Oh, okay. Take the, and then this is like, for example, two weeks before the exam, this is approximately one week before the exam, um, the week that you take the exam. So they'll offer you um, definitely questions kind of in the modules, but they'll also offer you this, which is um, a really good kind of way to emphasize the material. Okay. That's great. Mm -hmm. Have you taken any? Yeah. Have you taken a simulated exam yet, or are you waiting to get through everything? First? Oh God, no! I'm <laughs> I'm waiting until I get through everything. Um, but like I said, definitely one of the things that helped me out the most and kind of like really alleviated my stress was starting doing the reading the books, doing the lectures, and then jumping straight into the simulations. Right. Just because it is going to be, it's around fifty percent of the exam. So what happens um, for? all of the exams is that the first um, kind of, it's a four hour exam. And then in between you have like a minute break if you wanna take it or not, that's like up to you, unless you would wanna use that time. They give you the, the, um, the option to do that or not. So in the first um, kind of two blocks, it's gonna be all multiple choice. So it's all of course randomized um, with all the modules here. Um, and then after the 15 minutes, whether you take the break or not, you're going to have, um, I think, two to three blocks of just pure simulation, which okay. are these guys. So you're just going to have, oh, this is the perfect one. So you have like your exhibits, and then you have information here, and then it's going to tell you kind of um, what you, what it's asking you to do. So if it says, um, like, like I said, in the, in the scale master video, right. um, they go over kind of the easiest way to tackle this. And then, so if you, for example, they give tips on um, this, where it's like, if you see one, two, three in the, in the little text box, then it's most likely going to be a number that you input here. And then um, it kind of gives you little things. So you get used to the, of the exam. So you type in the number, you go accept. And then if it's kind of like these little um, icon here, it's going to give you like a whole list of uh, oh, wow. okay. accounts here. And it, it, it makes it easier in that way, but it's also very similar um, to the exam I've heard. And then um, again, the big thing that they also emphasize is read the instructions carefully. So right. if, if it says, for example, oh, um, uh, put in a zero where something isn't needed, you have to put in that zero because if you, let's say if the answer is nothing, but you don't put in that zero, you will get it incorrect. Right. So they really, really emphasize um, reading the question, um, kind of going every, through everything methodically, um, kind of not forgetting to put like the accept button, like you just don't type in the number, you have to click accept. Okay. Um, just kind of things like that to really help you maximize um, your points and that's because the whole exam is all about points and how many you can definitely acquire. Sometimes you will run out of time, but um, that's the way that they say to like definitely do it, like kind of do it the best, I guess. And then so in terms of the, so if it's out of a hundred, right? So the task-based simulations are 50% and the multiple choice questions are 50% of the exam? Yes, I think that's the way that it works. It works. I don't think wow. one outweighs the other. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I do know that the first two hours of the exam will choice, and then the last two hours of the exam are pure simulation. Okay. Um, so to kind of put that into context, um, but right. they're two completely different separate, separate blocks. So the first, um, like I said, the first two hours will be just pure multiple choice. You'll have that break whether you want to take it or not, and then I think everyone starts at the same time with the simulation if you okay. don't if you take the break so um, that's the kind of the time but again you're going to have a bunch of um, kind of simulations like all lined up in a row here and right. it's kind of what me and Tchaikovsky have been really emphasizing just do the ones that you can do as you're very comfortable with that you can potentially do like quickly um, so you have the rest of the time to do the more difficult ones. And I believe um, something that they, the reviewers kind of mention a lot is that they say that a simulation should take on average around 20 minutes, um, depending on, again, if it's longer or shorter, it could be more or less time. But that's kind of what the, the testers assume that you'll be taking per simulation. So 
Um, again, the best thing to do is to kind of cut down all time on the ones that you really truly know. So you have extra time for the ones that you're kind of uh, stumped on or you have a difficulty um, facing. Right. Wait, so when you take yeah. the, the second part, right? And so, okay, so you do your first two hours, which are the multiple choice questions. Mm -hmm. You can elect to do a 15 minute break. And then you can then, you then sit in and do they give you, it sounds like it's like six tax task-based simulations for the remainder part of the exam? I believe so. I don't know if it's exactly six, but I do okay. know that they mentioned like blocks. So I, I think the first okay. block is two and the second block is three. And I think there's an extra one. Um, I'm not too sure, but I know that whole chunk of the second part of the exam is pure simulations. Okay. Um, so again, kind of big ticket thing here is time um, and right. making sure that you kind of allocate it accordingly per simulation. So at the end, again, if you either run out of time or um, can't seem to get like your answers on there, just um, just do the best you can in terms of um, like putting putting down an answer, even if the, you might not know what the answer is, but just putting any like something down will help um, kind of try to get those extra points that can get you to the passing score. Okay. All right. So um, Lydia, Joanna, or Brent or Danielle, do any of you guys have any questions? Yes. Um, I have a question for Sophia. Hi, um, so uh, you mentioned that you came up with a system um, of studying, like, um, would you be able to share that uh, with us? Like how many hours do you study a day and so forth? Yeah, of cool. um, So for me, um, what I originally wanted to do coming out of school was I wanted like a part-time job while I was studying for the exam, but I quickly learned that because um, it just takes so much it took so much more time that I, than I thought it was going to. I just kind of fully devoted myself to that. So currently I'm studying full time. So I'm, I'm not working or anything like that. Um, and then up here you can see, let me see. It says right here, like the recommended hours. So for far, it's about 150 hours. I'm telling you right now, it's probably more than that, but it just kind of gives you like an estimate um, depending on the average. So for me, what, what helped me the most was planning, planning ahead, like having um, a planner every single day and that I would write down like how many modules I would have to do a day. So uh, let's say on Monday, I would do F1 and F2 together. So in that, um, so some of them don't have simulations, some of them do, but if I go to, yeah. So if I go to one that has, so first I would do the pre-assessment Mm -hmm. And then I would uh, physically read the textbook that is sent to you. So they, they kind of um, like uh, have chunks of it. So the, you have it to follow along. So I'll physically read the textbook, put in my own notes and kind of highlight the things that I think are important. A little pass keys within the, the, the textbook that will tell you like, oh, in the exam, um, this is how it is, or the, the examiners love to test this. So that's really helpful. So after I, physically read and do my notes. I go into the lectures here. So I'll, I'll show you guys one. So I'll do a launch here. It just kind of gives you um, the intro video. So I'll go through the whole lecture. And the cool thing is at the end of the lecture, they'll give you kind of questions here. And they're just kind of like to practice. So I'll go through that lecture. Um, and then it also gives you um, notes. So you want to it's going to tell you to like write in notes on your book. So you're going to write in even more notes or highlight things, or they might give you examples. So you do that physically on the book. And then after that, after I've kind of um, processed that information and kind of I've gone through the lecture twice, um, essentially, then I move in straight to the simulation. Um, as you notice here, technically next after the lecture, it would be skills practice and then multiple choice. But what I found really early on is that it was just so overwhelming having to go through the skills practice, which this is what a skill practice looks like. So it'll give you kind of like a, a mini um, overview video of the lecture. Um, and then it'll give you kind of um, another quote unquote like simulation, but it is like a little less kind of intense than the other simulations. 
But the thing is, when I was going through that, I felt like it was just so overwhelming. And then again, you'd have multiple choice and then I would have simulations. So when I did, by the time that I got to the simulations, because I was studying from around 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., I was just so lost and frustrated and confused because you do miss a lot of questions. Like that's something that you have to like be comfortable with is that it takes time and, and practice and skill. So for me about like three, four weeks in, I was like, okay, this is not helping me. I, by the time that I get to the simulation, which is a big part of the exam, I'm just mentally exhausted and I don't really kind of want to go through them as I should be. So about two weeks ago, I started to do my new method, which is, again, read the book, put in my own notes, do the lecture, and then jump straight into the simulation. And um, what I would do is go through the simulations on my own first, and then I would see whether I got them right or not. And then I would go into the skill master video so they could further explain the things that I missed. Um, or the things that I got right, just to make sure that I, I know what I was doing. And then because I did the simulation, um, I would go into the multiple choice questions and then the skills practice. So because this has a lecture, uh, for me, I just wanted to use that at the end to really drive the point home and um, like the textbook material and have a last practice. So um, yeah, but I think this, the thing that you have to remember here is that every it kind of really just depends on you as a student. So for other people, the lecture and the skills, like doing it kind of the way the be Becker wants is the best. But the key thing I think is really finding what works best for you. And for me, I just had to switch up my whole routine completely in order to get the material to stick. Wow, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry if I kind of like trilled off, but I hope I answered your question. Oh, no, you did. You did. So, Joanna, I, the only thing I was going to add to what Sophie was saying mm -hmm. is that the amount of time you are studying for a particular section, mm -hmm. there is a direct correlation to did you take accounting classes with challenging instructors, right? That's great. Did you take, did you also too, is that so, uh, Sophie, uh, okay. governmental accounting is tested in FAR, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, and right. Um, from what I've heard, it's heavily tested. So it's right. down yeah. here. So F9 and F10. Right, right. So if you've never taken advanced accounting or if you haven't taken, which is really like consolidations, foreign currency translations, and then fund mm -hmm. accounting, you just have to, like when you see that 150 hours, that kind of assumes that you've taken those base classes. So it may be another 30 hours on top of it. So just kind of like, if you're not as comfortable with certain areas, just know that you're gonna to have to put in more time to study. Got it. I mean, yeah, absolutely. That's a really, really big thing. Like for me specifically, um, what kind of took me a some time to kind of get used to was the fact that some days depending on like how big the for example like depending on how big PPE was because there were so much simulations and I go through detail by detail it would take me way longer than the the, the recommended 40 minutes mm. just because I want to make sure that I'm understanding what it is um, the question is asking me and yeah. what it is what information I need. So I would say don't feel rushed or don't feel stressed or don't feel bad about that. It, it might take you longer and that's okay. Like don't get frustrated with that some days with certain, certain lectures and certain things like that. You're going to have to just take the whole day to do one module. Mm -hmm. And um, that it's just, it's kind of a part of the process. Like Bennett said, it's a part of the mind game. It's a part of um, the course itself. Um, yeah, so some days it's going to take you longer, some days it's going to take you shorter, and you have to like be okay with that and just continue on regardless of how much time it takes you. Because if you really want to pass the exam, you have to put in and you have to put it in the time. Yeah. Yeah, you do not want to take. I mean, look, if you have to take it again, you have to take it again. But your goal should mm -hmm. be is that you want to study. If you don't study and you think, oh, I'm going to try to win. I'm going to try to just wing it. I'm going to try to guess. Yeah, there's, there's it, it, no I, I, I can tell you right now, it is not going to work out. 
and I've had students, and I'm not sure if I called her, if I called the student, like, I, I'm not sure if I called them not very smart or what I said, but when a student of mine told me that she wanted to, she walked into the exam because she just wanted to try mm -hmm. it out, I'm like going, uh, what happened? And she got like a score of like a 20. It was something just oh. horrible because if you yeah. don't put in the time to study, it's, it's just going to be, it's not going to be a fun day. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the biggest thing here is just time and patience, like just how much time and patience you put into something. Cause like I mentioned, one simulation could take you all day. And sometimes that's kind of, for me, it's worth it just because I know that I'm going to learn the material. Well, I'm going to, do every simulation and write down all the notes that I need to write down and make sure I understand the concept um, that will also help me with the multiple choice part on the exam. But in general, it just, it'll make me feel more prepared and more confident walking in as opposed to just skipping over something and just doing um, the kind of modules just to do them. Cool. And so what's like the little thing on the side? Is that like a, um, I was going to say, is there a, um, let's see here. Oh, it's like a mall right here. Hold on. I was going to say, Sophie, do you have a, uh, do you have control of the uh, participants in the meeting? Do you see anybody in the waiting room? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Is Lenneman. I think Danielle. Yeah, yes. I think Danielle is. Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah, no, she she's, she's sent me a text. Um, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, so it's all right. No, no, no. It's okay. just I, I was, I was going to do it, but it's like a so. Um, on the left hand side, so there's like a little home, and then beneath that is it looks like it's the sections, and then the icon there with like the little date on the side is that like a calendar or what exactly is that for? Um, on like the left hand talk, sidebar. Oh, right here. Yes. Like, what are all those uh, little yeah, icons? So this is kind of for your home. So this is kind of like your homepage here. Here, the little textbook is basically going to be where your modules is. So this is where you're going to be spending most of your time. Okay. Um, I think there's a calendar here. So yeah, so you can kind of do um, study schedule kind of with Becker. But me personally, I just find myself um, uh, finding more accountability when I physically write something down on a planner. Right. But you can play too. Depends just, again, on your preference. Um, here, so we have the Skill Master Library, so you can open up the library, so you kind of all of the Skill Master videos. So instead okay. of going having to go through um, kind of each module, I guess you can just find them here, which is really cool. Wow. Um, just because this would be like really, really helpful, for example, when you're kind of reviewing, so you can just kind of stick to the stimulus, which is really cool. Nice. Um, let's see, and then we have... Yeah, so flashcards, me personally, um, I just prefer to write everything down. Right. I'm not really a flashcard person. Um, and I give you performance standards. So another thing that I would say is like, don't feel bad if you score really low on the questions because it's going to happen and you kind of have to be okay with that before you kind of really start to learn to perfect um, the, the material and the way that they ask questions is very specific. Something that I'll, I also want to emphasize is that Becker does a really good job in terms of asking you questions and wording things the way that the actual CPA exam would be. So kind of, um, that's why I really, uh, emphasize the importance of the scale master videos because they talk about kind of what that looks and what they would kind of ask you, how would they would trick you. So that's something also to like really keep in mind. And then have a question number and then just kind of like a log out section here. But I mean, oh, so also whenever you get kind of a notification, so up here you have these, you would have to go to alerts and it would kind of alert you. Um, it gives you like certain alerts on um, kind of just stuff that they updated on. So it'll see, like this is the update that I was talking about. So this will kind of give you the breakdown um, of what they're updating in that sense. And then they'll just kind of give you, um, keep you up to date on post. And this updates automatically. But if you have a little message, it'll kind of leave like a little red dot there and then you can go to it and then it'll, it'll, you'll be able to read the message. Sophie, you also mentioned something really important, which is um, yeah. about, 
if you miss a lot of questions, it's just, it's yeah. part of it. The other thing I would tell yeah. you, and we've kind of already discussed this, if you're getting closer mm -hmm. to the exam date mm -hmm. and you start taking a bunch of questions and you're missing them, I was actually in that situation myself. Mm -hmm. I would recommend just reading the textbook. I wouldn't do questions because if you're starting to do questions and you're missing things, then it's not going to be good for your confidence going into the exam. And, but at the same time, I mean, if you read through a skills-based question and then you're like reviewing what that answer is, I think that that's fine. Yeah, I would say absolutely. Kind of going back to my point, I just really want to reiterate the fact is that you need to find um, a method that works best for you. So I feel like something that really also attributed the fact that I was getting super frustrated was the fact that I was moving into the lecture skills practice and the multiple choice were just kind of at a different level in terms of the material and the way that they were asking questions it just led me to be really stressed out and really frustrated so it wasn't until i actually switched my method of studying to simulations where it kind of helped me realize like okay this is kind of the worst that could happen and then after that i was able to learn from my mistakes and then go into multiple choice with the kind of better mindset in terms of like being able to answer questions okay with the fact that I'm not going to get every question right like that's just you in order for you to kind of continue on and succeed in this you have to understand that you won't get every question and that's okay but just with time and effort and as you go along you'll kind of get the the gist of how they answer how they want you to answer questions what they want you to do how, how they can trick you things like that all of that leads to your success it's like it's not just kind of at something that you can answer the questions and great. It's, it's more than that. By the way, everybody, I actually, so I also have a copy of, or I have access to the Becker CPA review and I tried doing multiple choice questions and my score, <laughs> my score was a 50%. So, and the, the reason why that is, is because the way that the multiple choice questions are worded, are really funky. They're not traditional. They're, they're stuff that's like buried in there. So in order mm -hmm. for you to pass the exam, you're just going to have to do, it's like getting into that mindset and learning about how they're going to be tricking you um, or how the examiners will be trying to trick you on those questions. And again, it's just the more you do the questions, the better off you'll be. Um, yeah, absolutely. Something that I also want to emphasize, so whenever you go into the multiple choice questions, and let's say you get a question right or wrong, Becker actually puts it, um, the explanation at the bottom. So whether you did get it right or wrong, it tells you why it's wrong, and then it kind of gives you the calculation too, which is really cool. So every step of the way, they offer explanation. They offer either um, like text explanation or video explanation. So it's not like you're going through this alone. You don't know why you didn't get it correct. Um, they kind of help you with that in terms of getting to the right answer, but for the right reason. All right. So any, some more questions here? This is awesome. So Danielle, Brent, Joanna, or Lydia, do you guys have any other questions or about how this works? Um, no, not that I can think of. Okay. I really appreciate you going through everything. Sophie, thank you. Um, Danielle, Sorry. do you have any questions or Joanna or Brent? Uh, no, um, that it was pretty um, straightforward in terms of like how it works. And I really appreciate um, all the sharing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And Good something well. that Thank I also want to Oh yeah, sorry. Um, something that I also want to add is if you guys ever have questions on that um, or any like uh, extra tips that you would want me to like potentially give you or like just to gather as much information as you could, you can definitely add me on LinkedIn um, or ask uh, Mr. Tchaikovsky for my email or my phone number. I'm definitely open to talk with you guys and we can talk about it and cry together. 
Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that happens a lot. So uh, putting it out there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of a lot of emotional, a lot of drama, all that other kind of fun oh, stuff with the CPA uh, exam. A lot of it. Yeah. It is. It is mm -hmm. a. Uh, it's a crazy exam, but it's yeah. very, very doable, right? And that's what yeah. you all have to kind of just kind of remember. So, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to try to. Let's see if I can reclaim myself as host. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Or reclaim host. There we go. Oh, okay. Got it. I've reclaimed the host. And then let's see here if I can share my screen. Okay. So can we all see my screen now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So um, again, I want to thank you all for being here today. Um, thank you for watching. And if you have any comments on this video, uh, please send them to me at 1812cpa at gmail.com.